The Distributed Ledger If we were to give a synthetic and complete definition of blockchain, we could say that it is a distributed ledger, arranged in blocks and protected by cryptographic algorithms. Let's examine its components one at a time. The first accounting records date back to roughly 5,000 years ago, and they were single entry, which is to say that they kept records of receivables and payables in two separate columns. In the 1500s, double entry accounting was introduced, which consisted of recording transactions on the books of each counterparty, one on credit and the other on debit. Double entry registers are still in use today in most commercial and financial activities. An example is a bank statement. With distributed ledger technology, here's a further evolution. The ledger now becomes distributed on a peer-to-peer -peer network and shared among all its users. Therefore, all nodes of the network own a copy of the ledger itself, which is constantly updated and contains the same information. A distributed ledger is more secure because it implies that in order to change a single recorded transaction, it is necessary to modify all the copies in the network. Blockchain is a particular type of distributed ledger, which has some additional features. Information is grouped and stored in blocks. Blocks are connected to each other in chronological order, forming a chain. The connection among blocks is ensured through the use of encryption. The decentralized structure of the blockchain ensures that identical copies of all information are shared across all modes in the network. Users validate said information independently, without a central authority. And even if one or more nodes are shut down, the remaining ones continue to operate, ensuring the continuity of the chain itself. The fact that data is distributed over a network of interconnected computers rather than being held by a single central entity makes computer attacks less likely to happen. An attacker would in fact have to be able to modify the majority of the copies of the ledger, creating what is known as a 51% attack, which is practically impossible. The decentralized nature of a distributed ledger therefore allows for greater protection than that provided by a centralized one, with respect to two types of risks. The first is that arising from a possible attack by intruders, who, from the outside, may try to modify the ledger itself to obtain an advantage through the alteration of the transactions contained in it. The second risk is the one that could come from the inside if the authority that controls the ledger were to decide to operate in a rogue manner, making changes to its contents. Speaking, therefore, of the trust that can be placed in the contents of ledgers, in those that are centralized, it is the integrity of the owner, ensuring the fairness of the transactions, while in those that are distributed, this trust moves to the code used to make the network operate, thus being more reliable because it is executed automatically by a machine.